In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, in many parts of the world, uh, the Church is already celebrating the uh, solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord. Well, in other parts uh, of, of the world, it will be celebrated on the 6th of uh, January. Uh, but we are uniting ourselves here in the Colegio Filipino to our brothers and sisters who are now marking the Epiphany this Sunday. So we open ourselves to the light who is the Lord. And we hope we could walk towards Him as brothers and sisters. We pray in this Mass for the healing and immediate recovery of Elfleda Villamayor. We also pray for the healing of a COVID-positive patient, Maria Genesa Chuchat. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ, O Lord. 
this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines, and over you appears His glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining regions. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see, your heart throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Epha, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing good and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Amen. Lord, every nation and earth will adore you. O oh God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flower in his days, 
and for found peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The kings of Tarshish and the Isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit. Namely, the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in, in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw a star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that, had, that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures 
and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and beer. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we thank the Lord for bringing us together as one community as we celebrate with many dioceses in the world the epiphany of the Lord. And uh, we recognize that in other dioceses or churches, the uh, solemnity of the epiphany will be celebrated on the 6th of January. Uh, what we normally would call, at least in the Philippines, three kings. But we are not sure whether there were three kings. Huh? We are sure that there were three gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But three gifts, do they mean three kings? Or maybe there were six who brought the three gifts. Or maybe at least two. But that's not our problem anymore. <laughs> no. yeah. And uh, we once again uh, thank the people who join us uh, through live streaming. You have made our uh, celebrations, our prayers, our Eucharistic celebrations uh, meaning, meaningful also. So allow me to uh, 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 propose a few points for reflection. First is epiphany, epiphania, uh, meaning manifestation. God manifests himself. God reveals himself. God shows himself to us in Jesus as the light. It is the action of God. That's why we will see in the readings, it is always God. The Lord shines upon you. We do not produce that light. It is the Lord, the glory of the Lord that will shine in Jerusalem. Over you appears his glory. So the Lord will make himself manifest. But in a special way, the, the focus of the epiphany is this. The Lord who is born, Jesus in Bethlehem, is not just for Israel. He is revealed as the light of all the peoples. Of all the peoples. That's why in the second reading, St. Paul would tell us that now it has been revealed that the Gentiles, the so-called pagans, those outside the people of God, Israel, are co-heirs. They are members of the same body. They are co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus. So the glory of the Lord is given, the salvation of the Lord is given to all. And the Magi are the symbols of the world. They, they come from the East. The world outside of the uh, people Israel. This blends very well with the appeal of Pope Francis in his uh, uh, latest encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, that we hopefully could rediscover our common humanity. We are brothers and sisters one to another. And the solemnity of the epiphany for us Christians is a call, a call to share the good news, to allow the glory of the Lord to shine on everyone. We should not 
consider the light of the Lord as our exclusive possession. The Lord is for all. And we will be sad if we do not share His light to others. And, uh, and so we also are thinking of not only of non-Christians, but we are thinking of many people who feel that they do not deserve the light of the Lord. Those who, who feel that they are grave sinners, those with past wounds, and they are ashamed to look at the Lord, and they don't feel worthy to accept the glory, the light of the Lord. So they run away. They, they feel that uh, uh, the community called the church is only for the upright, for those who, uh, who deserve it all. No, no, no. The light of Christ is for all. So come, come, you know, come and follow the light. Which brings me to the second point. The glory of the Lord is offered to us. But will we search for the Lord and will we follow his lead? You know, this is always a dialogical reality. Nagpapakita ang Panginoon ng kanyang liwanag Pero hinahanap ba natin ang kanyang liwanag? At pag nakita ba natin yung kanyang liwanag, susundu, susundin ba natin siya? The star which the Magi saw. Some said that the Magi were astrologers. Some said that they were uh, how do you call this? Mga manghuhula. Uh, no? And so they also make a living out of tricks. Uh, but never mind. No? They saw the star. But the star could be anyone. But in the end, it is the light of Christ leading them to himself, who is the light. But there is another light. The word of God, the scriptures. When the Magi reached Jerusalem, and with the question, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it's rising. King Herod and Israel, the whole of Jerusalem, got disturbed. They, tr they got troubled. Wow, may bago na palang hari. <laughs> so, uh, while the Magi saw the star, they were covered with gloom and darkness. And they assembled the chief priests and the scribes. And the chief priests and the scribes knew the scriptures in Bethlehem of Judea. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least up among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. But look at the difference. These experts knew, but they ignored. You may know the light, but you could ignore the light. They knew that Bethlehem was the place designated. But did, did, did they run to Bethlehem? No, they gave the answer and probably went back to their uh, routine. So the question is, do we search? Inahanap ba natin? Pag nagpakita ng liwanag, nagpakita ng salita ng Diyos, tinatanggap pa natin, magpapagabay ba tayo? O, sabihin ng iba, back to normal. So maybe this uh, solemnity is also an occasion for us to ask the Lord for the grace for a, a, a sincere search for Him. To see his light, to, he, to see his star, to see him as the star. At pakiusap po na po, uh, let us not compete with the star who is Jesus. 
He is the light. He is the star. Huh? The problem with our world are, is uh, there are many stars. <laughs> Some are even meteors. Some are comets. <laughs> huh. But uh, let us search for the true star. The star that leads to Jesus. He is the star. So we ask ourselves, how prominent is Jesus in our search, in the longings of our hearts, in the, uh, in the anxieties, the concerns, in the uh, restlessness of our hearts? Is Jesus, is his light the one that we are searching And finally, when the Magi found the child, uh, the star stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed and they paid him homage. They prostrated themselves. They gave their gifts. But their best gift was their adoration. They adored the new king. Adoration. Uh, it is something, this, is, uh, this aspect of, of life, of our spiritual growth, uh, is sometimes uh, put aside to adore, to worship the true God. But there seems to be a need in our in our uh, our human heart to adore. Unfortunately, we are <laughs> directing that adoration uh, not to the real God, not to the real star. No? Misplaced adoration. Some people, you know, after eating uh, uh, something that they really like, you know, and then they say, oh, now I can die. Huh? Really? <laughs> so you, you are worshipping that dish. You know? And when I was younger, there was even a song, no? Sinasamba kita. Kung ano mang daylay, di ko hindi na mahalaga, basta't sinasamba kita. Do we sing that way passionately to God, to Christ? Pero para sa crush, para sa ano, papikit-pikit pa, sinasamba kita. Now, ah, uh, we will offer gifts and sacrifices to the one that we worship. If we worship money, wow, you will sacrifice your time for money and we will even sacrifice human beings to worship money. If we pay homage to honor, power. Imagine the values that will be sacrificed. Not that they are made holy, but they are neglected just to satisfy the God called power. So the epiphany is also a time for us to Recenter, refocus. Who is my God? And do I give to the true God fitting homage? And after the Magi had worshipped Jesus, they did not return to Herod. They went back home. After worshipping the true God, let us not return to Herod. 
We have already discovered the true God. Why return to Herod? Keep, keep the path that the light of the true God has given us. And let that joy of having discovered Him, discovered Him, guide us. And let me end by connecting this again to Fratelli Tutti, uh, where the Holy Father calls us to be brothers and sisters one to another. And for us Christians, guided by the glory of the Lord. Let us not return to Herod. Let us not return to uh, vindictiveness. Let us not return to mutual destruction. Let us not return to uh, vengeance. Let us return to the light offered by the Lord where Gentiles, Jews, sinners, saints, rich and poor, our brothers and sisters. May we take the path of reconciliation, forgiveness, mutual respect. Let us not go back to Herod. It will just lead us to further destruction of each other and of the world. May the light of the Lord lead us to him and to one another and to the family, the human family and the family of creation that is supposed to be the glory of the Lord, the light that will shine so that his name will be glorified. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has called us out of darkness into the glorious light of the sun. 
Let us therefore pray for those who do not yet know the light and for all those in need of our prayers, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church and its ministry to the world, for all bishops and clergy, for missionaries, and for all those who bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for all those in authority, and for an end to war and oppression, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have not heard the good news of salvation, for those who have heard but not have believed, and for those who have forsaken their faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lonely and destitute, for the victims of injustice and discrimination, for the unloved and the forgotten, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in body, mind, and spirit, for the hungry and the homeless, for the dying and the brave, and for all those in need for our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the saints who have gone before us in the faith and are now at rest, and for all the saints on, on earth who surround us in a great fellowship of love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear the prayers of your faithful people and guide our thoughts and actions so that your will may be done and your name glorified through Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look 
with favor, Lord, we pray, of these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominations, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Santo, Santo, Dios created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and your martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope and our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, and merciful Lord, gather to yourself all your family, all your children, gathered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, and are passing from this life. Give kind of admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, you should enter under my roof. Say the word, my soul shall.
let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask for protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Saint Raphael, the Archangel, Saint Joseph, Saint Rock, Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, Saint Pedro Calunsud. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in the darkness, may God make you to a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Oh,
Trinity Feature Colegio Filipino. It is the home in Rome of Filipino secular diocesan priests, carefully chosen and formally sent by the respective bishops to pursue further studies in the different ecclesiastical centers in Rome. They may specialize in theology, philosophy, canon law, sacred scriptures, liturgy, history, communications, patristics, and other fields. They take up either the licentiate, which is a degree higher than the master's, or doctorate degrees for a period of two to four years. A rector, a vice rector procurator, and the spiritual director form the collegious group of administrators. They report directly to the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, which has an Episcopal Commission on the college. During the Roman sojourn, whenever no academic commitments allow, the priests of the college make themselves available to exercise their ministry with the Filipino diaspora and seek to know and obtain a most useful pastoral experience with the local churches in Italy. During Christmas, Holy Week, and summer breaks, they may continue their exposure in Italy, in the Holy Land, or in the different countries of Europe or America, doing pastoral work, studying other languages, or undertaking some other priestly endeavors. As a pontifical institution, the Collegio is directly under the Holy Father through the Congregation for Catholic Education of the Vatican. At the same time, the Collegio administration reports directly to the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, which has an Episcopal Commission on the Pontificio Collegio Filipino. Priest in Rome, live sub umbra petri, literally, under the shadow of Peter, close to the Holy Father physically, spiritually, and doctrinally. They can regularly see the Pope, at least from afar, and have relatively easy access to ceremonies he presides over. Likewise, college priests have direct contact with the memory of early Christians and saints, receive classes at pontifical institutions from leading professors from different countries, interact with priests from different continents and cultures, and exercise their ministry with the Filipino diaspora and with the local churches in Italy and nearby countries. They learn foreign languages, and with their knowledge of Italian, they have a more direct and immediate access to church information documents and pronouncements, especially those made orally or issued to news agencies in Italian. Such advantage of studying in Rome can hardly be obtained in other countries. Benedict XVI, on the 50th anniversary of Collegio Filipino, addressed its student priests and administrators saying, you have come to Rome not only to study, but to be formed according to the mind of the Church. This is why the spiritual formation in Collegio Filipino focuses on the permanent formation of priests. Aside from the usual help and means recommended by the Church, we encourage 
every student priest to give much time to the Lord in personal prayer. Our yearly retreat, monthly recollections, spiritual conferences, and holy hours are all geared towards this encounter with the Lord. Because of the demands of academic life, and at the same time, of course, yeah, the demand of our spiritual life. You have to budget your time. But one of the other things that had somehow balanced our life here is, is the fact that we live here as a community, in games, in playing, in, in sports, and especially even in our conversations. Uh, as I have said, once a priest withdrew from the community, that's the beginning of the end, <laughs> I would say. So here at the College of Filipino, we still try to maintain a common time for meals, common time for outing, common time for just, uh, you know, shall we say, recreation together, trying to talk to one another, share things, what happened, what transpired the whole thing, or even sharing even nonsense things, I would say. But somehow this would uh, build our life as a community. Pope John the Twenty-Third said, as he blessed the Collegio in 1961, these buildings, destined for the formation of your students in sacred sciences, will be like channels by which Catholic life will be promoted among you and the band by which the Philippines, a nation very dear to us, will more intensely be linked with the supreme magisterium of the Church. Pontificio Collegio Philippine A home My dear friends and brothers and sisters in Christ, I would like to share with you good news. We have in Rome a home for Filipino priests called the Pontificio Collegio Filipino. It is a place where we priests sent by our bishops and our local churches try to embrace the ministry of academic studies for service in the church. This institution, this building, has been in existence for the past 50 years. And so we are asking you to love this place and to support it. First, through your prayers. And secondly, through any help, financial, material help that you could extend so that we can upgrade our facilities and provide a better home for the students and for our guests. Sa inyo po lahat, maraming salamat. Mahalin po natin ang ating kolegyo Filipino sa Roma.